Uh, hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Xin Hang Li, and today I will introduce this paper in unsupervised key point uh, learning for guiding um, class conditional video prediction. Um, this paper has been published on um, NIPS um, in 2019. Um, here is the data to NIPS. Um, first of all, I will introduce the problem of video generation. And then uh, it is the motivation of this paper, uh, which depends on several um, previous methods. Uh, and I will give you uh, an overview of the framework of this paper. And then I will go into details of the proposed methods. And also I will include the data size and the evolutions. Um, at last, I will conclude some insights of the, this paper. Uh, naturally, we can assume that video generation is an extension of image uh, generation. In the previous paper uh, we discussed before, uh, like Singa, um, perspective night, uh, extreme, extreme view synthesis, we can generate a uh, noble view um, or image uh, conditionally or unconditionally, mm, like a thing uh, It is the same way uh, with uh, video generation. Uh, here is an example of the unconditional video generation, um, which is DVD guy. It uses the stand standard Gaussian noise as the input to generate longer and high resolution videos on a very complex data site, uh, which is uh, Kinetis 600. And also here is another example of the unconditional generation. It is a Moco game. It, pr it divided video um, clips into content and motion. Content consists uh, the object of the video the motion contains the dynamics. It also uses the random vectors as input. Uh, each contains a motion vector part and a con con content part. And the content part is fixed. The motion part um, can be viewed as a stochastic um, process. Um, then is the conditional ge video generation, uh, which will take the video, uh, images, uh, labels, or even posts as a condition to generate a new video. Here is a very famous uh, framework, video to video synthesis. Uh, the video is an example um, that uses the segmentation and thematic labels to generate the stream view. Uh, another conditional video generation in, in this paper, um, Everybody Dance Now. Uh, actually, it can be viewed as a subtask in the previous slides, video to video synthesis. Because in that paper, um, they, they also include the post as one condition, but they focus on the post information and the design uh, of their framework especially for the GAN, is different. Um, the input in this case is the frame and uh, the corresponding human pose. So we can build two categories. Uh, one is unconditional video generation, which will take the noise as input and generate a new video. And the second is the conditional ones. And today, our task, as we, we discussed, as, as I talked about the title, is video prediction. It belongs to the um, conditional um, generation, uh, which can use frames uh, to generate the future frames. And also, you can use additional, uh, additional conditions to uh, assist this precise process. The, um, the main challenge of the video prediction or generation is the temporal coherency. 
it requires continuous frames should be associated with each other. Uh, what does it mean? Um, because, for example, you can in the demo, if you can see a man is working, or the cloud is is changing in the sky. Actually, you do not know which direction or what shape will it will it change in next spring until you see the next spring. So it is very hard to model the temporal information, and also it is harder to predict. Um, and so next, uh, we're going to the motivation of this paper. This paper's motivation and methods are mainly depend on several methods. Uh, followed in the author's idea, I put them into three categories and which are the three conditions. The first one is only using the previous frames as a condition to predict the future video. You have two ways to deal with that. One is predict transformation instead of um, predicting the pixel. And the second is decomposition of the constant and dynamics of the video, uh, like uh, separate the background and foreground, and also divide the uh, video into content or motion. Uh, and the second one is using pose, uh, especially for the human pose information, plus the previous frames for generation. Uh, using the key points sequences or labels of the human pose can guide the generation process and also can uh, make the new generated video related to the action. So here is an example of the first category which use only frames uh, as the, as its um, condition. Uh, the intuition of that is the author believe the future frame can be transformed by the former ones. So it, pro it provides three transformation predictions, which are dynamics um, edification, and the second is the uh, convolution, and the last is a fine transformation. Using, using the three kinds of transformation pixel by pixel, you will get the future frame from the previous ones. Um, here are the examples of the condition two, which use the human pose. Um, first of all, they both use the posing estimation to generate human pose, and then translate the pose into the images. Uh, as you can see, the f the upper ones is um, a little bit different from the second. Uh, it has a module to <clears throat> predict the future pose for generate the future frames of a video. The second one is using the same pose information to transform it to another video, so uh, another new video to generated the new video. And so from the previous methods show that uh, predict the transformation will be better than predict the pixels. Uh, and the second, if we can decompose the components uh, like background, foreground, motion, and the constant, Will have will be helpful for the generating, and the second using the key points, uh, it, specifically for uh, using the human pose, will be very uh, helpful. So um, the authors uh, use the key po uh, key points guidance to generate uh, to transform the original frame, and the second they use they separate the background and the foreground objects to um, to generate a tr the translated uh, image and at last they generated the class conditional key points 
in a supervision uh, supervised manner. <clears throat> so here is a condition three, which is uh, our paper belongs to this category. They use post information and they use previous frame and also they use action labels, uh, but they do this post information a uh, post generated in a, in an unsupervised way. Um, so here, um, finally, we will get into the overview of our framework. Um, this methods uh, are stacked stack, stacked um, with many uh, advanced advanced um, method in this field. Um, their method contains two stage two stages. The first one is to detect the key points of a moving object. Um, and uh, <clears throat> and predict the and predict the future motion as a sequence of key points. Then the input frame and uh, can be translated to the future frame by these key points. So it will co contain three neural networks uh, in their framework. The first one is a key point detector, and the second one is a motion generator, and the last is a image translator. As you can see from this figure, the framework is highly dependent on the key point detector because the following two neural network will directly take the output of the key point detector as their input. So and also, so the main novelty of this paper is to train the key points detector in an unsupervised manner. And the other two modules uh, is similar with uh, previous methods. Um, so first of all, let's go into details about how they detect the key points in an unsupervised manner. Um, first of all, this method is learning the key point detector with the uh, image translator. Um, it will generate uh, an image and the background mask instead of the translated image directly. Then it will it will use the reference image synthesis and the synthesis image and the background mask. Smoothly to smooth using the uh, this function, uh, they will smoothly blending the um, blending the mask uh, the background in the image and uh, translate it to the um, new uh, synthesis image. So the, and also the smooth blending idea is now new, but um, the the effect is very good. Um, so, uh, as you can see, there are three equations um, under the key point detector. Uh, he, uh, I will we will go into details uh, later. But first of all, uh, I want to know why do we need to generate the key point? Um, the, there are two reasons. The first of all, following the idea in the everybody dance now. The post information is very important to generate the nature, reasonable, and action-related video. And secondly, doing it in an unsupervised way, which, which can make us extend our scope, not only focus on the human action, but also other objects' key points it's more general um, and also to generate the post uh, post labels for each video each frames it, it costs a lot so uh, so the novelty of the uh, unsupervised key points um, detector uh, is, is is very important so in a high level idea the method takes two frames from a uh, same single video as input, and the output is a 
the output is a uh, tra trans translated um, image. So during this process, first we translate the right reference image to the blue one. If our sim synthetic image is more close to the target, that means our network captures the dynamics changes between these two images. And also, we can generate the key points automatically during this process. So to make the translated image more realistic, more close, closer to the target, the author using the adversary laws and perceptual laws to constrain the network and to uh, learn the dynamics of the two images. Um, because we know that the detecting the key points is actually finding the coordinates, uh, coordinate, coordinates uh, of the activate points in the future map. And uh, now we do not have the ground truth uh, coordinates for training. How do we generate the coordinates in an unsupervised way? And how do we calculate the coordinates x, y of the key points during the, this method and also maintaining the differentially? Different from the post estimation method, which just pick up the most active activate point, uh, which means using like a max pooling or NMS uh, in each channel to pick up one point to represent the uh, the coordinates of this key point. Um, here they use a trick, which use the idea which based on the idea of the attention. Let's make an example to make this um, find, uh, calculating the coordinates more clear. Assume that we want to calculate the x coordinates of this key point. Suppose our feature map have a size uh, of 10 by 10. First of all, we do the reduce mean along the y axis. So we can get a 3 by 10 vector. After softmax, we may get a vector that contains nine zeros and only one activated point with the value one. Let's assume that it at the position 10. So then we do the matrix multiplication of the coordinates and the and, and the C by 10 vectors. And the coordinates is ranging from minus one to one because there are nine zeros and only one in the C by 10 vectors. So after we map multiplication these two vectors, we will get nine zeros in the coordinate vector and only one in, the, in, in this vector, right? So our coordinate of x will be one. So what if after the softmax, our active, activate point appear at the position one, zero? Then what the coordinate we will, we will obtain? So we will get the minus one, right? Um, so we will get, um, so after calculating the x, we do the same, same thing with the y axis. And then concatenate them, we will get these key points. And the previous methods uh, mainly directly uh, regress the x, y coordinates. Uh, it does not contain a Gaussian function. Uh, this Gaussian function is a step three uh, in the key points detector. Um, because just regress the x, y uh, coordinates um, does not perform as well as generating a Gaussian heat map. And uh, why? Because it is extremely nonlinear precise to make the network network's output two-dimensionally 
coordinates to optimize the learning process directly. And the loss function has a weak constraint on the weight. And using the Gaussian function to generate a heat map will make the network fully convolutional. And second, uh, the co corresponding heat map of an image uh, has a correlation between key points, which can be used to get the network for learning. And third, um, we can cap we can capture the contrast between the foreground and the background, and it can also be used to get the network to learn. Then it will train a motion generator for generating the future frames key points. The input will be in, in initial key points and the uh, actual action label. The ground truth of the future frames key point is generated by the previous key point detector. And they build a conditional uh, uh, variation uh, autoencoder framework and also apply an adversary training step. And here is the data side that uh, they use in, in this paper. The first one is a pin action, which is a human in sports action. The total number of the videos is 2,326, and the number of classes is 15. And second, they're using a, a, a UVA NEMO uh, data site. It contains 1,234 videos of the smiling faces, uh, which is split into 1,110 videos for training and 124 for evaluation. Uh, as I mentioned before, these methods can not only be limited on human action, because of the unsupervised manners of the key point detector, it can detect not only the human's key points, but also the mm, mm, other objects' uh, motions. So they use the MGIF to uh, evaluate their ideas. And they contains the video of the cartoon animal characters simply working or running on a red colored background. Uh, for this data side, 900 um, videos are used for training and 100 uh, videos are used for evaluation. Um, and as previous paper, we talk about the image, about the image synthesis. We have already seen the um, PSNR and uh, SSIM. Uh, which are both the measurement of the quali quality of the image. Uh, and today I will introduce two measurements. Uh, one is the inception score, uh, and the other is the factory inception distance. The inception score is using an image night pre-trained inception V3 network to classify the generated image. If it, is, if it is more realistic, the distribution of the output probability after the last layer will be more sharp. However, this method uh, highly depends on the image night, and uh, it does not consider the real training site you will use. So they propose, uh, another researchers propose uh, Batch rate uh, inception distance to uh, tackle this problem. Um, it will calculate the distance between the real and the fake images in a future level instead of the classifying level. So it is comparing the training image with um, our generated image, uh, which makes more sense. Uh, in this paper, they are using the fresh rate video distance, which is a, an extension of the FID. The lower scores means the generated video is closer to the real training video. As you can see, their method uh, achieves the state of art um, comparing with the three baselines. 
Uh, and also, the author provides the action accuracy results using their motion generator. And also, they did a user survey to show their generated video uh, is more realistic. So now let's take a look at its quality result um, among the three data sets. As you can see, the result is closer to the um, real video sequences, sequences, sequences. And the posts they generated uh, actually capture the motion generation as well. As you can see, in the baseline methods, uh, their post um, is not clear or it's just a blur. And uh, here is the result they obtained on another data site. As you can see, the smile, they, the smiling they generated is dynamic instead of constant um, or blurring like the baseline did. And on the MGF data set, their results is have a very good resolution compared with the other three. So here I want to further compare with some image synthesis methods like SYNGAN or BigGAN. Uh, as you can see, in image synthesis, uh, nowadays state-of-art method, uh, no matter it is conditionally or not con or unconditional methods, it can get a very impressive results, including the resolution and uh, quality. As you can see, we, we talked about before in the Singa, um, they use only one single natural image, so and generate the same distribution, but totally different images in a very high level quality. And also, uh, on the cl class conditions uh, image synthesis, the BGAN to generate a very high uh, resolution image and it's, uh, and it's very realistic. But, however, in the video generation, you can see these two demos. The height of the player is constant and the movement is viewed and not realistic. And the resolution quality is pretty slow, pretty low. The main challenges in this is, as I talked about before, is the temporal coherence, as I mentioned. We, we still have not now the impressive temporal information re represent method. So it is still a long way to go in the video generation. So as the last, in this paper, they pro propose an action conditional video prediction approach based on an unsupervised key point detections. First of all, they detect the key points from an input image. And secondly, they will generate the, a sequence of feature key points um, of the given action category. At last, they will translate each key point uh, and the frame into a target RGB frame, uh, image. The main contribution is they provide an unsupervised key point detector, which can be general and have no constraints on the data site. So thank you everyone.